Now the SURF package stands for surface and solid, and that actually supports NURBS curves and surfaces. Right now the extent of the mathematical surfaces that we support is NURBS, non-uniform rational B-splines. There's a book that's the definitive reference about NURBS called the NURBS book if you really want to get into all the mathematics behind them. The first thing is really is to understand curves, parametric curves. If you can do that, then it's really not a very big leap to understand surfaces. So the non-uniform part means the distance between the parameter values do not correspond exactly with physical distance along the curve. A rational means that you can have weighting factors, one weight per control point, which affects the geometry. And because of the way NURBS geometry works out, in order to represent so-called analyticals, like circles, arcs, cones, it's a requirement to have weights. B splines, the B comes from Bezier, is a simple curve which is controlled by 3D control points as well as the knots and the weights. Here are the main parts of the data structure for a curve. You have the control points themselves, which are a list of 3D points. The weights is a list of numbers and one per control point. The degree is an integer. It's the degree of the polynomial curve function. There is a relationship between the degree and the number of control points. And then the knot vector is a list of numbers. Each one represents a parameter value and it affects the shape of the curve in ways that you'll learn to recognize. So a typical curve has parameters where a parameter at the minimum parameter value is the beginning of the curve. The parameter value at the max parameter value represents the end of the curve. And typical parameter values are zero for the minimum and one for the maximum. So now a B-spline curve, we can make one with just control points. If we only specify control points, then the other four, the weights, the knot, vector, and the degree will all be computed by default. So in this example, we have four control points and we specify a simple curve based on those four control points. So there's the curve itself. And because we're also displaying control points, you see there's one here at the beginning, there are two in the middle, and there's one at the end. So this is a degree three by default, and it has default weight and a default knot vector. In this case, it will touch its control points at the end. That's not true of other control points. The control points will not necessarily lie on the curve itself. So we have two control points in the middle that don't lie on the curve. So now we can play with this curve object a little bit. Let's compile it into the system. And here's the simple curve. So let's make sure sure that's compiled. We'll do a make self of simple curve. And there is the curve object, simple curve. And we can ask it for things like the control points, just as we specified. We can ask it for the curve. That's the actual B-spline curve, the child object. We can ask that B-spline curve, for example, its start. And as expected, that corresponds to the first control point. The end should correspond to the last control point, which it does. We could also ask for the total length, which happens to compute to that value. But notice for curve curve, we use the message name total length, not just length, because length would be the length of the reference box that contains the curve, not the total length on the curve itself. If we ask for simple length right now, it's actually zero, because we never specified what the reference box of that curve is. So we ask for its control points. We could ask for its not vector. That's the default not vector that's computed. The default weights all come out as one, because we didn't specify any weights. And the degree comes out as three. The u min and the u max are the minimum and maximum maximum parameter values, and those show up as 0 and 1, which is typical. For a default B-spline curve like this, they will be 0 and 1. But there are plenty of instances where you can end up with a curve or a surface where the parameters don't go just between 0 and 1. They have other values for the min and the max. And if we ask for the tangent at 0.5, that gives us the vector pointing in the x direction. And that makes sense, because if you look at the curve itself, you can see that. So let's go ahead and make a simple curve in Tasty to start a new tasty session here and here's the actual curve we'll draw it now that's in trimetric view. Sometimes it can be more useful to get a top view. So there's the top view of this curve. And we can see clearly if you take the parameter value 0.5, that will be halfway along the curve right here. And the tangent vector here clearly is pointing directly in the x direction. So again, if we ask for that, the curve, then tangent is a function because you have to give a parameter value where you want the tangent to be returned. And that gives us back 1, 0, 0. It gives back a second return value also, which I believe is the actual point at that point. But what we're interested in here is the first return value, which is the tangent. For the next exercise, we're asking you to contain a sequence of four curves. And we're gonna see how this affects the total length of each curve to change its degree. Is it even possible to have a curve with the given control points and with each of the specified degree values? So if you remember what I said before about the relationship between the degree and the number of control points, this will probably answer this question for you.